Hi, this is Tom, Junkie XL. Welcome on this tutorial. And in this tutorial, it's a sort of a long one. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, Ronald Knight. Well, actually, primarily, we're going to be listening to Ronald Knight. And I will be talking uh, over it to tell you what I did and why I did it. Um, so I saw the movie. Um, and the synopsis, in very short, um, there's a, a mob boss who has a relationship with his son that is not all too great. And then we have um, um, a, a hitman that has a relationship with his son that is not all too great. And um, the two older guys have been friends for a really long time. At a certain point, the son of the mob boss tries to set up this drug deal himself. And the son of the hitman happens to be uh, the limo driver that picks up these Albanians from JFK Airport in New York on Christmas night and brings them out to the drug deal. And the drug deal goes south and this cab driver, the son of the hitman, sees one of the Albanians being executed by Danny, the son of the mobster. Um, from that point on, because he's a witness now, he gets chased and he gets protection from his dad and it turns into actually a quite emotional story and it is action but it, it has way more emotion to you to it than you would think um, and that's what i felt when i saw the movie and after researching older hitman movies that usually have quite emotional themes especially the ones from the 60s all the way up to the early 80s i wanted to explore that option for this film now I did a sketchbook that is roughly 50 minutes long. What I want to do, which I think is a, a nice experiment, I don't think it's done all that much, is that I will play the sketchbook how I had it. So there's no live strings, there's no live brass or any live recordings, it's all programmed. Um, it's a sketchbook, so everything doesn't sound mixed. You will hear some distortion here and there. Sometimes it's too quiet. You will hear a few mistakes here and there. But what I really wanted to share this sketchbook with you guys to see what my initial ideas were. And I will point out certain things in the mix window. I will uh, point out a couple of things, um, how certain things were programmed, but especially how they were written. And so I'll play the thing from beginning to end and um, I will just talk over it and I will show you certain things that I did. And at certain points I will stop talking and we just listen to um, what, uh, what is programmed as a sketchbook. And I will also mention where it's used in the film and how it's being used and if the director liked it or he didn't like it. And um, I think it's a, it, it could be interesting. And you would see, you would actually get to see a lot um, of how my Cubase session works, how I program, uh, what sounds I use, what libraries I use. Uh, and um, before we get to that part, um, let me tell you how I, um, what I did to write the theme for Liam Neeson's character, the hitman uh, called Jimmy Connell in this, uh, in this film. Uh, so I wanted a very emotional theme. So let's start with that. So I actually, wrote a melody that is um, very soaring and very simple. So let me play in a melody. So that's the opening statement of the of the melody and let me now play you the very simple but moving harmony that I added to this melody.
So very simple, very basic, but it lends itself really well for string iterations, brass iterations, and a lot of programming iterations, if you will. So that was the basic for Leem's character. Now, one thing I added to this, which is a propelling sequence that we will hear throughout the movie, uh, which is um, a sequence that goes, um, uh, let me see. Um, So a very emotional sequence and you will hear that that thing would be mixed with the melody and that the chords will be mixed with the other parts of the melody and with some other iterations. Now let's go to Sean, the mob boss. He's got a theme too, which is very, very dark and very moving, um, which somewhat uh, it sounds like this. It's actually played in solo cello, so it sounds way more compelling with cello, but I'm just playing it with this sound. And so it continues, continues and then it builds from there and it becomes this whole thing. Um, so those are the two things that you should be on the lookout for when you hear the whole switch is that. So you will hear that a lot and you will hear the. You will hear that a lot and you will hear the. That thing and these chords and then two. Let me just now play it a suite and I will turn the volume a little down here um, uh, in my room so I can continue talking about the suite and while we're doing that um, I will show you a couple of things um, throughout you know, the session and I will continue talking about it. I will also use some of the snazzy key commands that we made. So at this point the whole suite is open and it's quite long. It, uh, it starts at uh, uh, 24 seconds roughly and it goes all the way to almost uh, 53 and a half minutes. So it's, it's quite something. Uh, there's a lot of material in there. And um, just for the, for being a little more practical, I'm just going to select my button here, data by locator, and that way we'll just see the tracks of the suite that actually have been used. It's still a lot, um, but it's not 3000 that usually my template has, but it's still a good amount of audio here. Um, so at some point you, you will see a lot of scrolling around to, to make sure that we get to the parts that you want to see. And every now and then I will do a different type of key command, which is a data by cursor. And that just shows me what actually is happening at that specific spot. So let's just start there and let's run the suite from the beginning. And um, I'll talk a little bit about it. Here we go. Now this opening choiry kind of sound is a sound design sound that I made myself. It's this track right here and if we look at the notes, uh, the notes are actually quite simple and they don't not represent what you're hearing. What you're hearing is um, choir recordings that I made a long time ago and I did some really subtle grain samples on top of them. So that way we got this really shimmery effect.
This solo chime, uh, solo cello sounded really, really nice when it was played by a live cello player. But we get to that in a different tutorial. Um, another thing I'd like to say about brass in general is that I really love not only the movements of fifths in the lower end, um, which is somewhat unconventional classical music, but I just love the sound of it and the interlocking quality of the horns with the brass, with the trombones actually. Now this section right here that starts was actually one of the first sections I wrote of this sketchbook and it became the opening of the movie. A very interesting sound in this thing is again that really high uh, uh, choir sound that we hear, but also a synth, uh, which is the zebra, it's called the conquer, and it has a really dark quality. There's a signature sound for this movie. And then here we see some of those piano from hell sounds that I talked about in a different tutorial that I made of that piano that was made for 300. Now here, we hear, we hear the melody for the very first time and it's played by this shimmery synth. Which is also, in, this is actually the very opening of the movie, the first thing that we hear when the movie opens, where we see the logos of Warner Brothers. Now, if you were to turn your speakers all the way up, you can hear this really unsettling sound design sounds, which is this track right here. And it sits underneath that really lovely spooky kind of piano sound. This dark sound comes from the alchemy. And I think if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this synthesizer is discontinued uh, by Camel Audio. I'm not sure if that's absolutely true, but this is the rumor. Um, this spooky synth I programmed on the Omnisphere. Um, it's a lovely synth to program ambient type of sounds. Now we get the proper statement of the theme. So let me just show you the melody and the voicing of the piano chords underneath. So here you see, I actually changed the melody a little bit and the harmony. So now we get the second statement of that same theme and then it develops into something else. I don't feel like talking. I'll just be quiet for a second. So in fact, that's the opening statement in the suite, at least, of this theme. And now we move into a more heavier version uh, of, this, uh, of this theme. And the beginning of that section actually did, did not become part of uh, 
uh, our main character, Jimmy, but it actually became the theme for an external hitman that gets hired by the mob boss to take um, Liam Neeson and his son out, played by Joel Kinnaman. So let's now look here. So we see a lot of drums that really quietly play that ominous rhythm. In another tutorial, I showed you how I work with different notes for different velocities. So the higher you go in the notes, the more powerful the drum gets. Instead of using velocity, you see all the velocities are the same. So we see there's a section coming up that gets really loud because it's like octaves and octaves higher. So now, let's scroll down a little bit. I think the strings are gonna start right here and they're gonna play the theme. So let's just look at that, what happens here. Here we're getting really powerful on the drums. And as you can see, the velocity is like way higher on this thing. You can also see if we go to our group outputs here. So in this case, I haven't used, because it's a sketchbook, so at this point, you know, we haven't used any inserts on these drums or any of the strings. This is like raw programming, so this is not as good sounding as it's gonna be eventually when I use these plugins. Now here, we have the, the theme stated in the brass. Now we're going to a really strong ostinato played in the basses and the cello. This is an important ostinato because this ostinato will come back in the movie multiple, multiple times. Almost like a theme for this hitman. And uh, it gets played in all these different ranges of the strings and synthesizers. This is a really awkward synth uh, that we're listening here to, but I really love the sounds. It's a diva synthesizer. So the velocity here is very important for that belly kind of weird sound. So here we have strings coming in that got more and more and more lush as we go up. But at the same time, we have this really nice Pedro playing. And we're hearing also the brass. That plays the theme again. Another thing that you're hearing here is this track, which is again Piano from Hell um, that I mentioned before. I love this sound. This is another big bass sound by the Zebra. This sound comes back a couple of times in the, in the score. So here again, we have all these programmed drums. Let's just take the controller lanes out for a second. And we see here all these notes programmed. As you can see, what I explained to the drum tutorial about Mad Max, is you can clearly see how all these rhythms uh, go through all these different keys. So all these different keys are not different instruments. It's the same instrument. But if you go from low to high, low is very quiet, high is very loud. 
Now this is one of my more favorite sections of this um, um, of the score, and we we used it actually on three three key moments in the film. Um, this is the moment where. Uh, the son of the hitman, the son of Liam Neeson, played by Joel Kinnaman, gets taken by the cops who are crooked and they work for this mob boss. They're on the payroll. And um, I would almost say, doesn't it remind you of On the Run, Pink Floyd? Well, exactly. That was my major inspiration for, for this um, particular piece of music. I'm just going to zoom out for a little bit and then I'm just going to zoom in on it and then we're going to get some more parts that are playing. So. so you see there are quite some controller lanes here to make this sound to do whatever it does. That's another sound that I love so much. We call this sound the balloon. It's uh, one of the zebra synthesizers that I use for this. And again, we hear that conquer that really dark sound that we've heard before. Also, the sequence was played by the basses and the cellos um, at the same time. And because they had to play it so incredibly fast, it almost sounded like a wind. And it's also very quiet how they play it. Now this is a nice example to, to, uh, to be at in the suite because this little synth here that plays here, I thought it was a great synth, but the director said it was terrible. So this is a perfect example where you try stuff and then um, somebody says, that, well not somebody, I mean, this is what I'm saying, I mean the director says, no, this is not going to happen. So this synth actually disappeared out of the sketchbook and I replaced it with something else. My locator is a little differently here, and I'm just going to show you everything that's in this particular session because it gets quite big here at a certain point. Um, here, this theme continued with some ostinatos and with brass and uh, some lower strings, and then the theme gets played here uh, by the by the first and second violins. Um, well, let's just look at the brass. Oh no, let, let's wait on the brass. Let's see what these... So even though these strings are programmed just on the East-West Play violin, but in fact, all these strings that you see programmed here were divided over all the violins and all the violas. So it sounded really thick. And I usually try not to write staccato strings and legato strings at the same time, but in this case, um, um, the, the bass is playing is playing with the long notes. Uh, I'd rather keep them separate for mix purposes. So here we have the brass with the melody. Here the brass gets pretty big and you see how I do that interlocking voicing. So the, the bones and, um, and the horns wrap into one another instead of like having them underneath each other or on top of each other. Now this is interesting because we're now, let's just look here. We see the top line being played by the strings and at the bottom we see the bass and there's like nothing in between. Normally, in a classic composition or a traditional composition, that wouldn't necessarily be a very wise thing to do because it wouldn't sound all that great. But this area right here that I'm now making grey is so full of synthesizers and uh, sound design and other sounds that create a sense of music that I didn't want to program strings there as well because it would clot things up also in the same area, so we're talking C1 to C3, if we now go to the brass in that same section, you see this whole area is fully captured by the brass who are playing full on. So in this scenario, it made sense 
to keep the strings on the thinner side and have all the violins and the violas play the melody in octaves, have the cello take a break for a second and the bass is just playing the root. Now here we hear some really nice sound design uh, that was done with a program called Granite. Um, it's a very interesting program. Um, and I did some sound design, some granular synthesizers, uh, synthesis with it. Um, now let's move my locators around a little bit and uh, let's just see the section that's coming up if I do data by cursor. This was actually one of the um, um, director favorites inversions of this theme where the bass doesn't really change even though the chords and the melody are being played on top. And this became um, the first time we hear this theme and it's full when the two old men, the two good friends, the mobster and the hitman, Ed Harris and Liam Neeson, sit down on a bed after a horrible ending of a Christmas party where he got drunk and he burned his hands playing Santa Claus, sit down on a bed and they talk about the nightmares that they're having and how they can't sleep anymore because they see all these faces and the dreams of the people that they killed. And um, on the switch of the harmony, um, actually something else happens uh, in the score. So this theme does not continue to play like we do right now, but it will continue to play later on in the film. So let's just listen to how this develops. By the way, this is a ivory piano that I really like. It has a really lot of damper sounds on it. Sounds very nice with its resonance. So you see this melodic figure right here. Has gotten really important uh, for, the, for the score. It happens constantly. And the piece of music that's coming up at this point, it's probably my favorite piece. And this is the first time that we will introduce that really um, uh, sequence like piano. And um, it became eventually um, Liam Neeson's Adagio. It comes back a few spots in the movie, different arrangements, but the arrangements that we're going to listen to it at this point is the arrangement in which he dies. And um, it really feels like an Adagio and it's an you know, homage to a man who wanted to be a good dad, but eventually wasn't a great dad and became a killer of at least 20 people um, and um, when he dies in this scene he has a, 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 a interesting relationship with uh, with an with um, a New York cop who constantly harasses him about the names that he wants to hear of all the people he killed and he constantly says to him what's the number Jim what's the number can you still sleep at night do you still see those faces at night when you fall you know you, you can't sleep and you have those nightmares and eventually he makes a deal with this policeman that if he, if he gives up the other mob boss and his guy and if he lets his son go, that his son never did anything wrong, he just ended up in a bad spot, um, he will give him the names. And the moment he dies, the moment that low piano comes in, that's when his hand, his hand falls to the left and we see that there, all the names are written down on it of all the people he actually killed. So if I now open these few parts together, you can see how nice, even though there's some clashes harmonically here, but you see how nice this piano pattern 
that constantly repeats works with only these three bass lines with the constantly repeating melody line on top. Now what's interesting is that the melody line does not develop over the same type of uh, amount of bars as the bass notes do. So what will happen when the strings take over, the string melody line will constantly land on a different bass note and that gives it a very fresh perspective uh, throughout. So let me show you the strings, what happened in the strings. We have the introductory line by the second violins, then the violas, first cellos, second cellos. And the first cellos rounded off. You see where that top melody line is? Now it's on an F. But just previously, it landed on an A. When we recorded this live, it sounded really awesome with, um, uh, we had 48 strings, all mutes. So now this figure here, we actually see our melody coming back. So that comes back here too. Now we get really strong because we're going to go in octaves. And then the brass is going to join us too. And our opening piano just continues a little longer to round it off musically. Obviously in the, in the movie this was all slightly different, but the ending that we just heard is pretty much how that section ends. And then we have a, an, an, a prologue of the, of the movie where we see what is gonna happen of Liam's son, Michael, played by um, Joel Kinnaman. Now the section starting up that's going to start right now. Let's see what information we have in here. Data by locator. Let's see. It probably went a little too wide. Let's go a little. 
Okay, here we go. This became eventually um, Michael's um, rushing theme or investigating theme. Um, it has a nervousness to it. Um, two very simple chords um, that are played on sound design instruments and on cellos. And we played, we recorded these cellos with no vibrato, so they sounded like super, super icy. Um, an important sound in this one is one of my favorite synths. Um, it's the FM8. And you see here the pattern that it's playing, and it has a really soft belly quality to it. And we just transpose down to a G minor, and we're now going back to A with the pickup of the melody. At the end of the day, he is Jimmy's son, so it makes sense to have some of that DNA of, uh, of Jimmy in Michael's theme. Michael doesn't necessarily have really a theme. There's certain elements that I constantly use for him, but it's really like Sean and his son and Jimmy and his son that determines thematically where the movie is heading. Um, and. Um, so I constantly take little bits and pieces from Jimmy's theme and then sprinkle it over a theme like this. I use this theme three times um, in the movie when he is um, very nervous where his wife and two kids are. So it comes back on a couple of spots. Um, also here, uh, this, is, this is interesting too, where you see these two violin lines. It's like a slight tremolo of an F4 and an A3. In fact, this was just a guide. What we actually did, finally, is that we were on the spot and I asked people to experiment with these notes and to rise a little up and to play with it. So eventually, these two notes were actually never played. It was a cluster of really interesting um, orchestral colors. So what you see here is the, the piano theme that you heard just now, very slow. Um, it's an inversion of that. So it's again that A, that F, and that and the E, the F, and the A, the three notes that comprise out of that very hypnotic theme that we just played. So I again sprinkling something of Jimmy on Michael. Now we're back into like a more actually kind of thing. I really love this um, big distortion of bass right here. Um, let's hide this. Oh, there we go. There it is. Um, it's a bass sound that was originally made for Fury Road, but we didn't use it for Fury Road. I love this sound. Mm -hmm. in the background that bass again but you hear that really spooky thing on top of it so the constant high drum that we're listening to here is actually a doll that I uh, sampled for 300 also did use the 300 so it came in handy in this movie. Um, even though the director really started knee tapping when he heard this. It didn't make it in the movie because we couldn't find a good spot for it. But it's an interesting piece of music. Um, okay, this is an interesting section. Um, let me bring this up. So what we have here is, to a certain extent, it's similar to what I just said, is that if we look at the orchestral part here, we're just seeing three cello notes. That's not what we recorded. What we recorded is this really brooding things with strings and really brooding things with, um, uh, with brass that was playing. 
And that very interesting sound here, it's a zebra sound. That sound also became a signature sound for that killer called Mr. Price that we heard earlier on its signature rhythm of, which, will, uh, which you will hear a lot in the movie, not necessarily in this suite. Um, now, this is a section where a kitchen starts to catch fire in an apartment building after the police is raiding it and all the people are brought out of the of the building but a lady forgets to put the stove off and the, the stove starts to get the pan starts to catch fire the apartment gets fire eventually uh, three four apartments explode out of that big apartment uh, 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 building and all the alarms go off and this killer um, gets there to take Michael and Jimmy out because that's the wish of the mob boss. So I use this music, this really slow stretch music to, to basically bridge almost like six minutes and it's very interesting when you see the picture you would almost expect to be something really fast and pulsating but by making it so slow and stretching and really dangerous it was very 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 effective and it ends with a massive crescendo. Way heavier than this. Now, if you are going to see the movie, um, you will hear this theme at least six times. Um, I really love the sound of this. These are uh, stretched um, samples of my Fender guitar. So I sampled my Fender guitar, did a lot of sound design treatment on them, and then we built them into uh, contact instruments that live on one of my VSL machines. So the bottom one, which plays the chords, um, this one here, the, the, the bright green, um, almost sounds like um, an organ or an accordion, but it has that nice quality to it, and it, and, but it's a guitar. And here we hear the melody, the theme. very softly. A really nice scene where this theme is used is that when everything they think is over and they meet back again at a cabin um, at a lakeside and the mob and his guys are taken out and Liam Neeson just stands there about to get picked up by the police and uh, he looks at his son and at his wife and his kids and he gets very emotional watching them, realizing he could not give that family life to Jimmy. Um, it works very effective and the director really liked it. So now we get into a heavy action bit with full on strings and brass and percussion and everything. I use this as the end um, when they when they get out of the project so this might be a good time to stop talking for a little bit so you can hear how it all develops and I will so you hear there's that ostinato again of that 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 price guy the the, 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 the hitman that's also after them and again we hear that conquer sounds, that signature sound for that for that guy. Some other brooding synthesizer stuff. Again we hear here very interesting stuff. Sounds from the piano from hell. That piano that I built for 300. there's not all that much playing, just a few synthesizers and, and a few sound design tracks. Let's go 
back to data between the locators and then you see there's quite some stuff coming up. So these ostinados will come back in and it gets really wild there at a certain point. and see if we get the melody back. Exactly that theme again that I played earlier on the on the piano. But this is an interesting part. You see, we hear the melody, but the voicing of the chords is completely different. It's all like minor and diminished and transposed here. So here's another good example where I just programmed in the strings, you know, you know, you see this? Da -da, da -da, da -da. That's not what the string players played. Eventually they played something, you know, they were all off with like half notes, quarter notes, so you get this really interesting color in the highest strings. But this is just a guide what I was looking for. So now the strings get the lead here with the brass as choral support. Do you see how these lines come back that we heard from a slower version but then inverted while the top strings play the melody? Again here, again. Remember in that slow st string piece when Liam is dying it's da 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 and now it's reversed. So you keep using those really interesting little things for the DNA. Now, here we have our horn melody back as it was written. So now, where do we go now? <laughs> Another finale on this same type of theme with some sound design and heavy hits. Heavy drum rhythm programming. Again, a very soft iteration. I used this bit, but then I changed it quite a lot actually. Uh, but I started it as a starting point where eventually, um, like 60, 65% of the film, um, Jimmy goes and visits his mother who is sick in the hospital 
for the last time because he knows that at the end of that night he's or dead or captured by the police and he will go to jail for the rest of his life or maybe even you know uh, get a, a, a death penalty um, so I really like that particular scene and uh, shows how wonderful of an actor Liam Neeson is um, at this point so I used it there, but I, I changed it quite a lot, actually. So now we get to something that is um, primarily drums in the suite, but in a movie it's not. So in a movie, I use this drum... Sh let's just listen to it a little bit. So you see how many tracks of toms and programs here. I would highly um, recommend to watch the tutorial um, I, I did about um, Map Max drum programming and production. Um, and you see how many drum tracks go on here at the same time. Uh, it's a lot, but it gives that really massive uh, feeling. And even if we switch right now to the mixer, and we go look at the subgroups, um, you see, these are just drum channels at this point playing. Um, so these are one, two, three, four, five, um, six, uh, six uh, quad tracks that just are drums. Um, but these are way more tracks on the individual level. It's actually quite a lot, um, which I just showed you on the MIDI part. Now, um, so in this suite, it's just drums in this sketchbook um, but for when um, I finally used it for the film um, it's the last bit of the escape from that um, uh, from the apartment complex where they're, they're, Liam is fighting with this uh, hired killer Mr. Price but there's a lot of orchestra on top and a lot of other things so the, the drums are not that important important in that particular scene as they are at this point um, but I usually record like some smaller just drum bits um, you know not only to have them um, but also as inspiration for rhythms signature rhythms um, signature rhythms are very important to me and this movie has a few very very important signature rhythms So I'm just gonna cut some drums away here so we could actually, because there's nothing in it in this whole section. Um, okay, so now we've gotten to the point where we're listening to Sean's theme. We hear that really soaring cello line with that low piano. So So now we're looking at the cellos the basses um or technically all the strings and the horns and the tubas so I'm trying to zoom in for you as much as I can so you can see more properly what's going on. Oh, these little things here are key switches.
So this piece of music, this really dark piece of music, comes back a few spots in the, in, in the movie, but it's always centered around Sean and his son Danny that gets taken out by Michael. Uh, sorry, by Jimmy. You see these counter lines here? This, this one, and this one, this one, this one. We've heard them before a few times in Jimmy's theme, and they now come back in Sean's theme because they interact with each other constantly. And the reason why this theme is so dark as it is, is because of Jimmy, because he takes out his son. So also here, a lot of sprinkling of thematic material from Jimmy onto Sean. The next section, um, we hear some really loose piano notes that are somewhat based on Jimmy's theme. And it's played on the piano from hell, that 300 piano that I built, and it gets some really sexy um, string chords on top of it. So harmonically, we're now here dealing with the theme of Sean with an iteration of Jimmy's theme on top. You see that E flat going to the D, E flat going to the B, it's right here. This is the B right here. And then here. So we use this two times. I wanted to say some more, but we're just gonna focus on the loud bit that comes now here and there. This is actually till the end of the suite. It's really big and a, it's a roundup of a massive fight. And also here we hear in the brass a very dark theme of Sean. Same section now in the strings. So now we get these chords actually back from from um, Jimmy's theme on the very melodic piano uh, guitar thing, but now it's it's combined with a lot of melodic material from Sean. So these words, when these themes really come together. <clears throat> A lot of drum programming, programming going on here. We're getting real epic here. It's 
So we hear now a lot of the melody lines, a lot of the counter lines, a lot of the, the harmonic lines that we've heard throughout the whole score, everything comes together here. And that's the end of the suite. Um, almost 55 minutes. And um, I hope you enjoyed um, um, listening to this and I showed you as much as I could. Um, again, I'd like to apologize for um, the screen being slow every now and then, but that's because I'm doing screen capturing at the same time. I'm working at a lower resolution, so it's not as economic as fast and snappy as if I'm not doing that and I work on my traditional two or three screens setup. Um, <clears throat> furthermore, I'd like to say in one of the tutorials, I talked about making decisions really quick and work fast. The reason why I was do able to do this within 10 days is not because of the touchscreen or the faders or the snazzy key commands or the folder structure that I have on my uh, window. It has something to do with it, but more so the decision taking process by making sure you take decisions fast, be happy with them and stand by them and live with the consequences. Um, so that's the end of this uh, tutorial and I really hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in another tutorial. Thank you. Bye.